Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today in Neuroscience Methods 101 we're going to talk about electroencephalography or in short EEG. So during the activities of our daily lives our brain becomes activated all the time. And as neuroscientists we would like to look at the activity of the brain. However we got a problem, we cannot look inside the head. So the question is, how are we going to look at that activity? One method that we can use is called electroencephalography or EEG. For this we place a number of sensors on the head. The number of sensors can range anywhere between 16 and 128. And when you connect the machine to a computer you will see a variety of squiggly lines on your screen. But what exactly are those squiggly lines? Well, for this you need to know that when a brain cell, or a neuron, communicates with another neuron, it sends a signal that is generated by the influx and outflux of charged particles. This means that there are areas around the neuron that are positively charged and negatively charged. The charge of a single neuron we cannot measure from outside of the head. The signal is just too small and it cannot travel through the skull. However, if there is a difference in charge of multiple neurons, let's say 100,000 or so, then we can pick up a signal from outside of the head. However, keep in mind that the signal is still very, very small and the signal is first amplified before we can actually read it. Depending on the directionality of the charge, the signal that we measure either goes up or down. Now you may think those signals are looking really nice, but what do they actually tell us? What does it say about brain activity and how does that relate to anything in our behavior? Well, if you look at the signal, you will see that there is this pattern or rhythm in there. That's why we call them brain waves. And how fast these waves go up and down and where we can find them in the brain does tell us a little bit about the function of that brain area. For example, if you are asleep, you will see very slow waves called delta waves over the entire brain. However, when you are awake and you're in some kind of relaxed state, you will see faster waves such as alpha waves or at the back of the head where the visual cortex is. And when you're doing something where you need a lot of attention, then you will see faster waves such as beta waves in the frontal part of the brain. However, note that what I just told you are just some generic examples. Basically, each rhythm at a specific location of the brain tells us a story about the function of that brain area. You can also combine EG with a task. Let's say a participant has to press a button when they see the letter M. Then you can look at the EG signal that happens just after the button press. And that will of course tell you about the brain areas that are involved with the decision that has been made to make that button press. This is what we call event-related potentials, which means potentials, that is EG signals, related to a certain event. But I will talk more about event-related potentials in a future video, so look out for that. So that's it, my short introduction about EG. I hope you liked it, I hope you learned something, and if you want to know more about neuroscience or psychology, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Bye bye!